Welcome home. I'm Dr. Tama, a minister, licensed psychologist, and sacred artist. And this is Homecoming, a podcast to facilitate your journey home to yourself. While I will provide weekly inspiration and mental health tips, this podcast is not a substitute for therapy. I'm so excited you're on the journey. If you want to request specific topics or share your progress, email me at homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. Also, after you listen, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let's begin. Welcome back, Cojourners. I am so excited to be with you on today, and we want to send our collective condolences to our audio engineer, sister, poet, prophetess, activist, artist, Asia, who also had the gift of being raised by a queen mother who was also an artist, an activist, a spirit woman. And so we give tribute to her mother and are so thankful that Asia is such an integral part of the Homecoming podcast. Well, we have two poems I'm going to read on today because you all have been sending them in and I don't want you to have to wait so long before you hear your poem. And we have two phenomenal pieces to share on today. For those uh, who may be listening for the first time, I encourage our listeners to write a poem about their homecoming journey and to send it to me at homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. And the first piece is by Julia Bianco, who is an Argentinian artist and teacher artist based in Los Angeles. And the piece from them that I am going to read is Rain. I never wanted to be no one except me. And I guess I'm still learning how to be me. Walking with the fear of not being loved, accepted, reciprocated, still walking. And I guess for every time I was scared, For every time I cried so hard, alone, my heart shattered by the gravity of loss, death, the gravity of pouring my heart in exchange for raid. Friends, this blessed earth held a patch of warm soil to rest my broken body, wiped my tears gently and turned them into trees. Beatles, rain. And I guess after all, I am still learning to hold myself from within myself with kindness and compassion so that when they finally arrive, they will find me complete, being no one except me and with God by my side. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Thank you so much for that piece. It is really incredible as we think about loss and death and waiting and the realities and necessities of our healing, comfort, compassion, and wholeness. So I really appreciate your piece. And now I want to share an untitled poem by Tisheda. And Tisheda writes, I want to build a home in here where light will burrow pathways beneath my shedding skin and the fire singes cobwebs between deserted ribs. I want to find comfort, find grounding, find safety in the valves of my beating heart walls of my breathing lungs, words of my pleading mind. I need to build a home in here made of blood, of bone, of marrow, in the heat between my rubbing thighs, in the creases and crevices and folds of flesh. I will find warmth, find softness, find salvation in here. 
where frustration, fatigue, and fear run rampant in here, where hopelessness pours out from the hollow behind my eyes, where sorrow and spirit are intimately intertwined. Right here is where I will lay my foundation, lay brick, lay stone, tile, shingle, and plaster. It is time I build a home right here so I may finally lay my head to rest. Oh my goodness, T. Shada. <laughs> Thank you so much for that piece, for both of our pieces today that really capture this homecoming journey. And so we are building a foundation. And I love that emphasis on right here, because often we are thinking about someday and one day, and hoping and pleading for a future reality, for a future peace. And so what it means to come home to myself in the present, what a gift, what a gift. And so I thank you both for your pieces and for the others of you who have sent your poems, know that they are coming week by week, we will share them. Well, I have had several requests for this week's topic and it is coping with failure. Coping with failure, and I'm going to add, and disappointment. Coping with failure and disappointment. That there are seasons in our lives where the thing that took us off track is when situations do not work out. And these failures, if we want to call them that, can show up in multiple domains. So sometimes we have uh, failure in school. Sometimes we have failure at work. I know one of you who wrote in, I believe was taking the bar exam and did not pass. And so it may be failure related to test taking. We also can have failures in business. Some of you have tried to launch your own business and things did not work out. Sometimes we have failures in relationships that we had hoped something would be for a lifetime or long term, and it ended up being seasonal, right? It ended up not lasting, and so that can feel like a failure of sorts. And then we may also feel failures emotionally or spiritually. I know many people set New Year's resolutions and some of us don't wait for the new year, but you just set goals for yourself of how you want to be, the ways in which you want to show up. And so when you're not able to keep those commitments or you do not keep those commitments, uh, when we relapse, when you go back to uh, unhealthy habits, dysfunctional situations, old ways of talking, thinking, and being, uh, all of those things can feel like failures. and. One of the things I'm mindful of is we're often comparing ourselves uh, to people who only broadcast their success. And so there are those who will post about their wins, but will not post about their losses. Um, many people who have a child will post the birth of the child, uh, but will not post about uh, miscarriage. Uh, many people post about marriages and weddings, uh, but rarely posts about divorce. Uh, many people will post about getting a new job, but will not post about being laid off or fired. And so uh, we can, when we fail or when things fail, we can really feel shame, embarrassment, humiliation, and isolation. Often you can feel like you're in it by yourself. It can seem like everyone else is winning and I am not. I want to name that we can also have those experiences as it relates to health, uh, that there are those who have tried to uh, transform their lives in particular ways or try to take care of themselves. And uh, these body temples are fragile, are vulnerable, are flesh and blood, are human. And so it does not always go in the way that we would want things to go in terms of our wellness. Whether you are feeling present tense or in the past have felt failure, 
uh, vocationally, in your career, in school, in your personal life, in your emotions, your habits, your spirituality, your health. I want you to know that you are not by yourself, that as we gather here today, we give ourselves first permission to embrace your feelings, to feel your feelings, because sometimes we make our situation worse by judging ourselves or condemning ourselves for feeling disappointment. But if you wanted something very badly and you did not get the outcome that you wanted, then you will feel disappointment. You may feel frustrated. You might feel embarrassed, sad, depressed, angry, irritated, confused, uh, anxious. And so give yourself permission to feel. We are sacred beings and spiritual beings, but we are also physical beings, emotional beings. And that is a part of the process. And it is also evidence that we cared, right? If something failed and I didn't really care too much about it, it doesn't matter to me, right? But some of us try to say we don't care about anything and it's just not true. So one of our encouragements in the homecoming journey is to tell ourselves the truth. And so if you really wanted something, really hoped for it, worked for it, studied for it, some of you prayed for it, and you did not get the outcome that you were hoping for, to give yourself space to feel, to not have to be a stone, a wall, a brick. But if you feel that embarrassment rising up, which is why maybe you don't tell a lot of people, if you feel that anxiety, anger, sadness, and shame, to be able to sit with it. A part of the healing is also the feeling. And sometimes we want to skip the feelings and just jump to, I don't care and I feel better. And when we stuff our emotions, when we hide and stifle our emotions, it often shows up in other ways. So it can show up with a bad attitude. It can show up uh, by taking out frustration on other people. And so instead of um, projecting it or displacing it to actually Give yourself the comfort of feeling what you feel. And then it is important to think about your coping strategies. Uh, sometimes when we are feeling sad, disappointed, frustrated, embarrassed, we may turn to things to cope that are actually unhealthy and that uh, end up creating more consequences for us, right? So now not only do you have the actual experience of the failure, but that for some of us turned into a ripple effect because I was upset that the relationship failed or that I got laid off or because I was upset that I did not pass the class. Now I have done some destructive things that have created even larger consequences, right? So you want to be mindful about trying to distract yourself, trying to fill that void uh, with food, with drugs, with alcohol, with people who do not care about you, with shopping, uh, with gossip, whatever it is, some people self-harming behaviors and practices, and instead to really be mindful that even though I am frustrated and some of you are upset about someone else causing the failure and some of us are mad at ourselves for our part in it failing, um, but to make a decision that I'm going to show myself compassion, I'm going to show myself care in the ways in which I handle uh, this disappointment and distress. So I can allow my tears to come. I can journal about it. I can meditate. I can call a friend. I can speak with a therapist. I can sit in a bubble bath. I can go for a walk or exercise. We've talked about embodied healing, and sometimes we're holding all those emotions in our body. And so to release them and to let those out, uh, to give myself comfort and appreciation uh, for the effort I did make, right? And I want to name that sometimes if we failed at letter J, 
then we miss all of our progress that we made A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So there are a number of things that went well, right? Instead of one component erasing everything else, yes? So a part of our coping may also be how we frame or reframe what happened. Now, for some of us, the failure is simply a failure, right? Like I failed the test and I simply did not pass. And that's, you know, pretty clear cut. But there are some of us where what can look like a failure on some levels was a win on another level. What do I mean? That some of you were on a job that was not in alignment with your purpose and you did not do well on the job and you were terminated. Now, the reality is, for some, that led you to then pursue your actual purpose and go where your gifts are useful. And so the temporary failure can sometimes lead to a secondary success. And then for some, the thing you were attempting was destructive for your mental health, wholeness, and wellness. And so while the relationship failed, you no longer being in the relationship is a win because it was unhealthy, yes? So I want us to really look at, to really examine, uh, was this a clear-cut failure? And also, were there parts of it that worked well, right? And so one of the things I have uh, seen a quote, I'm not going to be able to cite it in the moment in terms of the person because uh, I can't remember the name, but it said, um, I don't fail, I learn, right? So then we start to think about what did I learn from that experience? What did I learn from the situation at that job? What did I learn about friendship? What did I learn about marriage? Uh, what did I learn about this examination or how uh, my approach to studying, what I can retain, and how I can manage my anxiety around test taking. So reflecting on what can this failure, this disappointment teach me? And then I want to encourage you to distinguish between failing and being a failure, right? So one is an event, the other is an identity. So the event may have happened. You may have failed at a class, may have failed on a job, may have failed as a uh, friend with this person or in a partner in this relationship. But I do not take on, internalize the identity of a failure. Because when I start to identify myself as a failure, then I will enter into every circumstance expecting to fail. And that's what we call overgeneralization, where because uh, this relationship, or it may have been the past three relationships, did not work out, that we can take on a script and identity and start saying, I am no good at relationships, or I'm just not any good at school, or I am just not any good in being an entrepreneur, or I'm just not a good mother because I made these mistakes or I failed in these ways. So I want to invite you to really separate the act of failure from the identity of failure and to really caution you from taking on an identity because an identity can, for many of you, feel unchangeable, right? And so that can lead some of us to never trying again because we develop these intense fears. And some who are listening have a feel, fear of failure and so now no longer apply yourselves. And so that is a part of self-sabotage, right? If I think you're gonna eventually fire me anyway, I'm gonna show up with a bad attitude. If I think no one is ever going to love me anyway, then I am going to disconnect and not allow anyone to get close to me. Right? If I believe I'm no good at friendship, then I'm going to uh, be mean and harsh with people so that I reject you before you reject me. Yes. So I encourage you to lay down that identity, to shed that identity, to release that identity 
and then to begin to plan your next steps so that you don't remain stuck. And this is important. Notice we had to feel the feelings first and process it before we start stepping forward. Some of us wanna step over the process and just jump in mobilization, which can then mean we repeat the same mistakes because there was no reflection, right? If the relationship failed, if the marriage failed, then I may not just need to jump into another one. I may need time to grieve, to feel my feelings, to feel the anger, the sadness, the embarrassment, and then to really reflect and reframe and pull the lessons out of it. And once I've done that, I begin to plan my path forward, right? What is it that I want? Did this teach me that I actually wanted and so I need to study harder or apply myself in a different way? Or was the lesson in this that I don't actually like that or want that and so I want to choose a new path? I want to go forward in a new way. And then I do want to say it is an important aspect of failure and processing failure to accept responsibility for your role, right? And some of us are very good about saying what everybody else did wrong. And let me clarify that when I say this, I'm not talking to uh, abuse survivors, right? If you were abused uh, on your job, abused in a relationship, then it's not appropriate um, nor accurate to just say, oh, well, they abused you, but you know, what did you do that deserved that abuse, right? That's false. Um, but if we are not talking in the realm of trauma and abuse and there is a failure, then you wanna really own what was my part, right? So even if this job was dysfunctional and disorganized, is there any role that I played in it? Any role uh, that contributed to the problem um, if things did not work out with my New Year's resolution or with my sobriety, it's not going to be helpful to just say, oh, well, my family made me mad. That's why I had to drink or my partner broke up with me. That's why I had to do it. Or, you know, the people at group were uh, shaming me. No, I need to take responsibility for my actions and for my behavior. And the same thing when we think about the ending of a friendship. Um, or the ending of a relationship to really not only account for what the other person did, but was there a role that you played uh, in the situation or the relationship not working out? Because when I cannot see myself, then I am powerless and my vision is distorted. But I need to reflect long enough and with enough honesty and humility to know what did I bring to that space? How did I contribute to this? So in my understanding of myself, I can go forward with more clarity and clarity will allow me to go on a new path. And then finally, I want to invite you in whatever field you're in, if it was a career failure, um, or in the relationship realm, or spiritually, psychologically, I would invite you to research those who have failed in the past and then made a comeback. <laughs> there is that saying, this uh, failure was a setup for my comeback. And so the failure will not be the final chapter, right? The failure does not have to be the end of your story. And while we see many successful people and you can feel like, oh my goodness, this person has always been awesome. But you know, if you hear the story of Oprah Winfrey, she'll talk about the many times that she was turned down and criticized and told she wasn't good enough, but she kept going. If you research and interview, uh, talk to the elders in your family, they can tell you some stories about when things didn't work out for them and yet they kept going, right? They persisted, they persevered. And so wherever you are in this journey and whatever the form of disappointment or the feeling of failure is related to, I want you to know this is a very real season 
It's an important season for you to acknowledge, to grieve, to feel, to process, meaning to think through. But this does not have to be the way the story ends. And so uh, the next chapter will not look just like the prior chapter. It may show up differently because you are different, right? We are transformed by these experiences. But the hope is to be wiser, to have more compassion, to not let the experience harden me, but instead to allow it to propel and motivate me. And to know that as I look around, as I look around, that I am not the only one that has found myself in a pit of disappointment, but I am determined that this is not the end of the story. I'm so glad that you were listening on today. And thank you again to our poets. I'm excited for your next chapter after the disappointment, after the failure when you are at home with who you are, it's gonna be incredible what you write in your story. I invite your soul to tell your heart, mind, body, and spirit, welcome home.